Hey everybody, welcome to Glacier Online. This week we are starting a new series about the armor of God. There's actually a passage in the Bible that talks about this armor. It's not like a literal armor that we're supposed to wear, but it is a metaphor of the things that we need to do every day to keep us in line with what God wants us to do. So we're going to talk about that later, but before we get started, here's a silly video. Hey everybody, the game option for today is called Gold Fishing, and you're only going to need a few supplies to play this game. The first one is the Snack Cracker Goldfish. You're going to need a box of goldfish. Then you're going to need two bowls and a straw. Uh, you'll need two bowls for each player and a straw for each player. And so the way this game works is you're going to pour goldfish into one bowl, and then you're going to use the straw to try to lift fish out of one bowl and put them in another. And whoever gets more goldfish in the other, the empty bowl at the end of a minute wins. And the way you get the goldfish out with the straw is not by like flicking them out. You have to breathe in through the straw while touching a goldfish to kind of create suction to pick the goldfish up out of the bowl and put it into the other one. So I hope you enjoy gold fishing. So next up is the Bible video. And in this video, we are talking about the armor of God. And if you want to look up the actual passage in the Bible that references the armor of God, it's found in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. So the first item of the armor of God that we're supposed to put on every day is the belt of truth. Now again, this is not a literal belt that you have to find somewhere in the universe and put on every day. It is just putting on God's truth in our lives every day. But why is it a belt? Well, back in the olden times, they had these big old long robes that they would wear. And so if you wanted to run somewhere and you had your big old long robes, which is almost like a big dress, you would trip on your robes and you would fall over. Running was really difficult. So what they had to do to run was they had to roll up their robes and tie it around their waist with a belt so they would be free to run. So when they say belt of truth, it's like you're rolling up all of the, the, the robes so that you can actually be free to run because our lies will trip us up. They will cause us to stumble. Even if we tell a tiny little lie and think we will get away with it, there's a funny thing about lies. Eventually, you'll have to tell the truth. And it can cause you to stumble. It can hurt people's feelings. So it's just not good ever to lie because eventually you're going to have to tell the truth. And God doesn't want us to be tripping on our own lies all the time. He wants us to be free. So he says, hey, put on the belt of truth, avoid telling lies, and you will be free from the weight of all of the robes that lies can be. So that's the belt of truth. I hope you can think about that as you watch the Bible video. This video is about a guy named Peter and how he told some lies that really hurt his relationship with Jesus. And it also talks about how Jesus helped fix that relationship. So think about the belt of truth this week and check out the reflection questions and we'll see you next week. The Miracle of Mercy, Peter. This is Peter. Hey Whoop. Peter was a fisherman who was called by Jesus. Hey. Peter saw the many miracles of Jesus and he heard all of his teachings. When the time came for Jesus to die and take away the sins of all the world, Jesus had one final meal with his friends. During this meal, Jesus told his followers that the time had come for him to leave them. Huh? Peter asked, where are you going? Jesus told him Peter couldn't follow him now. What? But that he would follow him later. What are you talking about? But Peter said, why can't I come now? I'm ready to die for you. Jesus said, die for me, Peter. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even knew me. 
Then Jesus and his disciples went to the Mount of Olives so Jesus could pray. Along the way, Jesus told his followers that they would all abandon him. Uh-oh. But Peter said, even if everyone else leaves you, I never will. Jesus said, Peter, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. But Peter wouldn't believe it and vowed that he would stay with Jesus until the very end. The other disciples vowed the same. Yeah, I Later on that night, Jesus was arrested by men sent by the religious teachers and priests. Peter tried to fight for Jesus, and he cut off the ear of one of the guards. But Jesus healed the guard and went quietly with the captors. All the disciples scattered just as Jesus told them they would. The men led Jesus away to the house of the high priest. Peter and another disciple followed them. Peter came to warm himself by their fire. Uh, hello. <gasps> a servant girl noticed him in the firelight. Huh? Finally, she said, this man was one of Jesus' followers. Oh, ma. But Peter denied it for the first time. He said, I don't even know him. <sighs> After a while, someone else looked at him and said, you must be one of them. Oh. Peter for a second time said, no, I'm not. Uh, okay. <sighs> About an hour later, a man who knew the man whose ear Peter cut off said, didn't I see you in the olive grove with Jesus? This must be one of them. He comes from the same place as all of them. Yeah, you're right. But Peter said, no, no, no. I don't know what you're talking about. And then Peter heard the crow of the rooster. Jesus turned and looked at Peter. Jesus' words flashed through his mind and Peter left the courtyard weeping. Then Jesus died and was placed in a tomb. The disciples heard that he had come back from the dead. Peter even saw the empty tomb and believed that Jesus was alive again. And Jesus appeared to the disciples to show him that he was alive. Some of Jesus' followers were together when Peter said, I am going fishing. Okay. So they all went out to the sea, but caught nothing all night. At dawn, they saw a man standing on the beach. Oh, hey, over here. The man called out to them and said, have you caught any fish? Nope. The man said, Throw out your net on the right side and you'll get some. Uh, okay. So they did, and they couldn't bring in the net because there were so many fish in it. Then one of the men on the boat said to Peter, It's Jesus. When Peter heard that it was Jesus, he swam to the shore while the others pulled in the load to the boat. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them. Mm -hmm, I miss a fish. Got it. Jesus said, come have some breakfast. While they were eating, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes, you know I love you. So Jesus said, then feed my lambs. Then Jesus asked again, do you love me? Peter said again, yes, you know I love you. And Jesus said, then take care of my sheep. And then a third time, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. So he said, you know everything. You know that I love you. So Jesus said one last time, then feed my sheep. And so Peter went on to feed Jesus' sheep by helping establish the church and by writing books that we can now read in the Bible. And though he denied Jesus, he was forgiven, and many came to know the love and forgiveness of Jesus through Peter.